You pull something off the shelf, sunflower oil. Pull another thing off the shelf, sunflower oil. Pull another thing off the shelf, high oleic sunflower oil. Okay, what's the deal? Should we be concerned? It's everywhere. It's an omega-6. Is it really a problem? Okay, let's go ahead and let's break down what this really means and what we have to pay attention to. Now, today's video sponsor is Haya. So if you have kiddos like I do, then you know that they don't always get their greens in, right? They don't always eat the way that they're supposed to. So Haya is a multivitamin that is in a chewable, sugar-free form, sweetened with monk fruit. That's good for kiddos. So the reason I like Haya isn't because it's just this miracle supplement or this great thing, but they understand kids and it's created by a couple of dads that think like I do. They think the same way. Like, frustration with the supplement industry, frustration with what's available for kids. You look at most like kids vitamins and there's seven grams of sugar or five grams of sugar. That makes no sense to me whatsoever. So to have a cool chewable multivitamin for a kiddo that's sweetened with monk fruit and still has 12 different veggies and fruits in it, pediatrician approved, it just makes me smile a little bit because I like doing things that are good for my kids but also make my kids smile and enjoy life. So there's a link for 50% off down below in the description if you want to check out today's video sponsor, Haya. Yes, sunflower oil is an omega-6. So that doesn't mean that it's the worst thing in the world, but I want to outline probably the most important thing that we need to pay attention to. It is a polyunsaturated fat. Okay, that means that it is relatively unstable. Polyunsaturated fats, like if you take fish oil, for example, fish oil is an omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acid, but if you left it out on the counter, if you left some fish out on the counter, it wouldn't take more than a couple hours before it would start to stink and get really kind of rotten and it would be bad, right? Okay, that's because they go rancid quick. And fish oil is just a very clear example, but that happens with seed oils too. That is the problem that we face more than anything. So does that mean that you should avoid everything that has sunflower oil in it? Okay, well, we do need to look at a couple of things. If you look at the profile of regular sunflower oil versus what's called high oleic sunflower oil, which we see in a lot of processed foods as well, I mean, that can make a big difference. You see, regular sunflower oil is largely what is called linoleic acid. Okay, now a lot of the evidence out there, or I should say the presumed even misconceptions, but some of the evidence out there has demonstrated that linoleic acid that is in like sunflower oil converts into something called arachidonic acid Okay, utilizing an enzyme called delta-60 saturase. Well, once it becomes arachidonic acid, it supports the production of eicosanoids like prostaglandins, which trigger inflammation, or like uh, leukotrienes, which are a big part of the inflammatory response. So it's a common theme to say that omega-6, that sunflower oil, is going to elicit an inflammatory response. It is not quite that simple, okay? how much you consume absolutely plays a role. Now, I know that when I'm doing grocery haul videos and I'm going through the grocery store explaining ingredients, I typically suggest avoiding sunflower oil if you can, but if you catch my response, usually it's, it's like this, sunflower oil, uh, like it's just frustration because I see it all the time. I'm not like, don't get this because it has sunflower oil, okay? I think a small amount of it is okay. Okay, now hear me out on this too. There was a study that was published in the journal Nutrition and Metabolism, and it found that consuming even 551% above baseline of linoleic acid did not affect the amount of arachidonic acid in the phospholipid bilayer. So what that is suggesting is that perhaps linoleic acid doesn't convert as easily into this not so good arachidonic acid, okay? Now, if you look at the image that's up on the screen, I've talked about this in another video, this arachidonic acid, it's this delta-60 saturase is an enzyme that converts the linoleic acid into arachidonic acid. If we don't have a lot of that enzyme, we don't convert as much. So that is called a rate-limiting step. That is clearly an important piece. My point in saying this is, According to this study, you could consume quite a bit of linoleic acid and not have it directly affect arachidonic acid. So does that mean that omega-6s are totally fine? We can eat as much as we want? No, I've covered that in another video before too. Okay, studies have also suggested that ARA, arachidonic acid supplementation or gamma linoleic acid supplementation, other omega-6s directly impact how much ARA, arachidonic acid, is in the phospholipid bilayer. So that could be, yes, some omega-6s are definitely a problem it comes back to, again, the rancidity, okay? So if something is shelf-stable, but it has sunflower oil in it, that is not exactly what we want. However, there's a decent amount of what is called oleic acid in sunflower oil too. 
That is a monounsaturated fat. Monounsaturated fats are things like find in olive oil, in avocado oil, obviously various kinds of them. There's a bunch of them. We don't need to go into detail. They're somewhat more stable. Okay, they don't denature as much. They have, you know, more hydrogen bonds, so they're more they're more saturated. So it's harder for them to break down and go through lipid peroxidations. So they're more stable. Well, then if you look at something that's on a lot of labels, it's called high oleic sunflower oil. If you look at the ratio, so high oleic sunflower oil is very little linoleic acid, okay? But it's quite a bit of oleic acid. Does that mean that we're getting the same benefit we get from olive oil or avocado oil? No, because there's things like hydroxytyrosol, there's good benefits with olive oil and antioxidants in avocado and olive oil that we're not getting in sunflower oil. It's a little bit of a moot point. It kind of makes it nullified. It kind of, it kind of just makes it like, okay, this sunflower oil has less linoleic acid, has more oleic acid. The reason it has more oleic acid is to simply make it more shelf stable, okay? There's also different kinds of sunflower oil out there. You don't typically see it much, but there's even literally high linoleic acid sunflower oil. Because maybe in certain cooking situations, who knows? I don't know why that would exist. I don't know who wants it, but someone out there does. Maybe it's Bill. Sorry if your name's Bill. The point is, we do need to pay attention. Let me touch on something that I've talked about before. The amount that we consume is a huge piece too, okay? We have to be very careful with that because if we consume too much, then we are limiting how much omega-3 we can utilize in the body because omega-6s and 3s compete for the same conversion and the same absorption. So if we are only consuming a bunch of omega-6s from these processed foods, then it's making us more difficult for us to get the omega-3s in. So the bottom line with this is if you see high oleic sunflower oil, don't run the other direction, but limit it. If you see regular sunflower oil, I would definitely limit consumption of it because the risk of it being rancid is quite high. Sunflower oil, when seen in refrigerated foods or in perishable settings, probably not as big of an issue, okay? Because you're not dealing with room temperature where it could just ultimately be rancid or go through lipid peroxidation as quick. So in a perishable setting, I'm not that opposed to sunflower oil in moderation. You're going to have just as much linoleic acid coming in from sunflower oil in a product as you would from having like, you know, a handful of almonds. It's still, the issue is still at hand, but we also have to remember that linoleic acid doesn't necessarily convert. It's when we have too much and it's counterbalancing how much omega-3 we get in. So balance is key. I hope that this like alleviated some stress. So when you're going to the grocery store, out of all the processed foods you get, maybe 20% of them allow yourself to have sunflower oil. Maybe 30% of them if they have high oleic sunflower oil. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and I'll see you tomorrow.